I'm bad at. I am terrible at making clickbait. Up until two years ago, my most popular video was about a basketball being dropped from a dam with a bit of backspin. It takes off like a rocket and shoots out way further Anyone than you'd expect. Like this video was embedded on literally hundreds of news websites, and in its first week, it got 16.3 million views. But almost none of those views came on the YouTube platform. Wait, YouTube? Wait, you I didn't know, know that. You, sir? Embedded's work the same way that they do on Twitch on YouTube. Form million views, but almost none of those views came on the YouTube platform. Why? Because I gave it this thumbnail and I called it strange applications Chat, of the magnet. Chat, Red, Red Bull uh, dude, has a Christmas videos that have like 20, 30 million views. But on YouTube, there's like no likes, there's like no comments or whatever. It's embedded like crazy. This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More about them at the end of the show. Now I believe within YouTube, I'm used as an example of how not to package your video. As if to demonstrate just how bad a title and thumbnail this is, someone else re-uploaded the video with the clever title, Basketball Dropped From Dam. And within a few weeks, that video had received tens of millions of views on YouTube. This is when YouTube gave me access to Content ID. That's the system that allows you to earn revenue when someone else re-uploads your videos. Which was good, but I still wasn't very good at clickbait. So for this video, Jesus. I called in an expert. I wanted to see your reaction face. Can you give me like a reaction face? Like what's a good thumbnail face? Oh, I got you. This is a thumbnail face. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I have like 10, I go through the motions of like. <laughs> Wait, dude, no, let me just take the best one. I probably have like 500 of these just saved and we can just Photoshop my face on my face. I don't even really have to do it anymore. Oh, that's... When I started on this platform some 10 years ago, clickbait was less important. Subscribers were what mattered because most of the views came from the sub feed. And videos went viral usually by getting a lot of attention elsewhere, like on Reddit or Facebook, not due to the YouTube algorithm. But once you True. had a big video and people subscribed, well then your next video would likely get a lot of views from those subscribers. So YouTube would take that popular video and share it with more people. And so you'd get more subscribers classic. in a positive feedback loop. But soon YouTube realized that this did not create the best experience for the viewer. They discovered that showing people only videos from channels they were subscribed to led to fewer clicks, less watch time, and less engagement with the site as a whole. Plus, they knew that relying on other platforms to drive traffic to viral hits was risky, since those other platforms might disable the traffic at any time. So they needed to make YouTube a destination in itself. Uh, they wanted I people to come to YouTube, this see videos that interested them, click on at least one of them, and watch it for a while. Ideally, get sucked down the YouTube rabbit hole and spend hours on the site without even noticing it. The ultimate resource is people's time and attention, and every platform is trying to capture as much of it as possible. So to make YouTube this go-to destination, Chat. they- I think that now they have like a full monopoly or whatever, and what they show you a lot of times is what they want to show you. Not, not, not that it makes the site, people use it more. A lot of content is recommended, doesn't appeal to anybody really, but they push the fuck out of it. They had to purpose. decrease the importance of subscribers, make it less like a podcast app where you only get the shows you're subscribed to, and more like Reddit, where yeah, stuff with the most engagement rises to the top. But that necessarily meant increasing the importance of clickbait. Now, okay. there seems to be- So he says, this is not true. You know what, dude? You know what? Let, let's look at it together. Watch this. Trending. Artist on the rise. 300,000 views three weeks ago. Who, who, who asked this? The, the sidebar, like, a, no, no, the mid bar recommended. Uh, they're not here right now. They're like, um, it, it's just odd. Like, a, a lot of times, it's, it's like, it's, it's just, it, it's, it, it's nothing. It's like nobody asks for. And that's what trending has been, though. It's, it's very, um, it's cherry picked or something and I, I think that's that's I don't know I, I feel about it I think it's stupid to be a paradox when it comes to clickbait people on the front page oh like this oh yeah like that yeah I mean sometimes not all of them people almost universally claim to hate it but you also see it everywhere so why is this well, one of the problems is we don't all agree on the definition of clickbait when I google it the top definition is 
On the internet, content whose main purpose is to attract attention and encourage visitors to click on a link to a particular web page. We could call this type 1 clickbait, and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. I mean, if you didn't try to attract attention and get people to click on your links, then you wouldn't really be doing your job. But there is a second definition, one that I think more people ascribe to, which is Does something it. such Does as it. a headline. My tells I mean clickbait. It's just nonsense. Like it's it's just nonsense. Clickbait would be like doing drama that people have been asking about. Um, I'm hanging out. Line designed to make readers want really to click hot. on a hyperlink, like, especially when the link uh, uh, leads to content of dubious value or interest. It's a bait. Wikipedia says a defining characteristic of clickbait is that it is sensationalized or misleading. And it also talks about, okay, okay, Mattel's a clickbait then. about teasers that intentionally withhold information to exploit the curiosity gap. They give you enough information to make you curious, but not enough to satisfy that curiosity. Here are two actual titles from a news website. Nine out of ten Americans are completely wrong about this mind-blowing okay, fact. That that and is if someone that gave some is kids not... some scissors. Here's what happened next. <laughs> I think we can all agree that these are examples of bad type two clickbait. Now imagine a clickbait space where on one axis you have how misleading or sensationalized it is, and on the other, how much information is intentionally withheld to create a curiosity gap. Well then these two titles fall in the top right corner, and these are the zones of type 2 clickbait. At the other extreme, you have things that are so unsensationalized as to be dull. You could call this the dead zone. Now here is where you would find strange applications of the Magnus effect. I mean, I didn't tell you what the applications were. Now in the middle is where you would find type 1 clickbait. But honestly, I think type 1 and type 2 clickbait are so different That's a title. that we shouldn't even use the same word for them. Instead of type 1 clickbait, my friend and YouTuber Brady Heron suggested legit bait. I mean, it might sound enticing, but chat, it is chat. legit. I mean, it's right though. Instead of type 2. What about that wasn't? Watching a video about chess and playing a game of battle royale. Guys, no, but no, nobody would We could use click trap, click trick, link trap, or dupe shoot. What's important to recognize is that for any given video, there is no one true title and thumbnail. Each video could have hundreds or thousands of different legit bait titles. For example, how does a zero G plane work? I went on a plane that does parabolic trajectories. What happens to fire on a zero G plane? Now the most enticing titles and thumbnails are My plane caught on fire. Watch what happened next. Ding 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 ding. That did found no, that to type that's two number clickbait. one juicer. I'm reminded of the infographic Gone by Smarter wrong. Every Day showing that on social media <sighs> Almost the died. greatest engagement Police occurs called. close to the boundary of what's allowable. <laughs> But remember that everyone's definition of clickbait is different, and everyone's perceptions of words and images are different. So these are not clear boundaries, they're actually kind of fuzzy. What for one person might be legit bait, for someone else could be a click trap. In What's the hood. clear is that on a site where click-through rate is important, clickbait of all types is inevitable. How important to a video's success is the title and thumbnail? Very important, of course. If they don't click on the video, they don't watch it. You can't get 10 million views unless 10 million people click on the video. So, I mean, it's literally that simple. They don't click on it, they don't watch it. So why is clickbait everywhere? Chat, chat. Well, what if we forget out what the algorithm was for Twitch? Right? We figured it out. And we knew exactly when, at which intervals, they take pictures or thumbnails of the streams going on. And I timed a one frame that you wouldn't be able to see of, of me watching some, some girl with big boobies. Right? Right? Clothed, of course. And, and at certain intervals, the title, the, 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 um, the thumbnail would always be that picture or because these pictures. It works. More enticing thumbnails get more clicks, despite some people's claims that they won't click or they'll unsub. It's just like evolution. Whatever survives multiplies, and traits become amplified. I know how it works. If you don't um, begrudge the giraffe it's, user -based. it's long neck so it can reach the highest leaves, I think thumbnails can are you user -based. begrudge a YouTuber the big red arrow that allows them to reach further audiences? I talked about this in my video two years ago. To be successful as a YouTuber, you need to optimize two things. 
watch time and the click-through rate of your videos. That's the number of times the title and thumbnail are clicked divided by the total number of times they're shown. That's the number of impressions. Now at the time, this was something of a revelation for me because I always thought my job was to make great videos and then a title and thumbnail that adequately represented what the video was about. Yeah, like, uh, but now I realize that, that sucks, making though. the title and thumbnail is at least half the job. That's crazy. This is not just because better titles and thumbnails get you more clicks, but because better titles and thumbnails will get you way more impressions. YouTube has limited real estate with which to show you virtually infinite content. And so it's not enough to make a good video, even if people watch all of it. You also have to make a title and thumbnail that gets clicked, especially in competition with other really good titles and thumbnails. That's the only way you can expect YouTube to give you more impressions. Now, the big development since my last video on this is YouTube introduced real-time metrics like views, impressions, and click-through rate. And I suggested this would create you would go insane. Trees. So what you can bet will happen Look at all this is all, that all creators will launch a video and then they'll be sitting there with all these different variants of thumbnails and they'll be swapping them out and looking at what that does to click-through rate and then going with the one that leads to the greatest click-through rate. And this is basically what has happened. Let me give you my favorite example. Last year I made a video about asteroids, which I thought was really good. I called it Asteroids, Earth's biggest. These rocks will end our time on Earth. Gone wrong at 3M in the hood. Threat, gone sexual. Which is something Stephen Hawking said. And people were very positive about the video. They thought it was I maybe one it. of my best. But the performance was well below average. In its first day, Asteroids was ranked ninth out of my previous 10 videos. It was probably on target for about one and a half million views. So I tried different titles and thumbnails like Asteroid impact, what are our chances? Or asteroid impact, what could we do? But none of these changes <laughs> got much bad. traction. And then on day three after launch, I changed the title and thumbnail to these are the asteroids to worry about. <laughs> and immediately, the video started doing better. It quickly shot up from almost my worst performing video to my best. It now has 14 million views. Nothing about the video changed, just that one image and 38 characters. But because of that, the video has reached nearly 10 times as many people as it otherwise would have. And the title and thumbnail accurately describe what the video is about. I mean, sure, there's a curiosity gap, but you couldn't explain the whole concept in the length of the title. So if you see a the YouTuber changing arrow. titles and thumbnails, this is why. Because that effort can be rewarded many times over. I've seen people objecting to this practice because they think the creator is trying to dupe their audience, get them to click on the same video more than once. Uh, but not really. That's not it. That's not really the whole because their audience is already clicking the videos because that, that, that's their subscribers, the one that aren't subscribed, the one that are, that are out. The point you know? is to get YouTube to show the title and thumbnail to more people. We're trying to increase the number of impressions, which is heavily dependent on the click-through rate. Now, a lot of my recent videos have this typical view curve. There's an initial spike after I release the video, and then a dip, and then a second bump after I have figured out a better title Recommended. and thumbnail. Oh. I change the title and thumbnail, and I watch the real-time view graph. What I'm looking for is a noticeable bump in views. Sometimes there's no change, sometimes it gets worse, but on oh, occasions oh, yeah, when you see well. something like this, well, you're to dip well, then you know you found but, um, a winner. Hanging this out is something to... all the big YouTubers are doing. No, no, Not even um... Mr. Beast knows exactly which thumbnail will work best I'll think about beforehand. It. Have you ever changed a title and thumbnail and then the video did better? Oh, of course. So every video I usually make like two or three thumbnails and then if it's not doing as well as I want, we usually just swap them out and see if it does better. Um, but the thing is like, you don't really know. I mean, I mean, you could know if you just were an almighty being that could just predict what people would be interested in. But uh, is you know, the usually, guy? like if you do hide and seek, you don't really know if like you hiding in a tree and then someone walking below you is a good thumbnail, or if you hiding in a trash can and then walking in front of you. So you know, just do both and then see which one interests people a little bit more. I feel the same way, but I I do feel like you have a better sense of this than like most people. Of course, <laughs> I mean, no one gets forty million views a video. <laughs> okay, but what is the point in getting more views? If you're cynical, you might say it's all about that's money true, and fame. And while there are certainly financial incentives to getting more views, that's not why I do it. As an educational YouTuber, I think there are two very good reasons for using excellent type one clickbait over more straightforward packaging. 
to understand yeah, the first reason, that, let's though. consider... Yeah, yeah, he's going to use something noble and nice, but then it's always, always a mix with that. But if he does better, you feel like you, like you did better. You feel like you did a better job. If you entertained more, more people, and it's quantifiable, then you feel like you did a better job. It's just fulfilling. It's Different not, possible titles it's not for evil, my most recent just, video. It's just more I fulfilling. I called it the simplest math problem no one can solve. But it's a video about the Collatz conjecture, so perhaps a more straightforward title would have been simply to call it that. The problem is, if I publish a video called the Collatz conjecture, the most likely people- Yeah, but the money makes you fulfilled. Yeah, but, um, uh, if you're only fulfilled by money, you'll you'll be you'll you end up be uh, end up being being void. And, and I think you you'll understand. I think everybody, everybody understands that that uh, that fulfillment well, to click comes on from it many different are those things. Those who already also know money. what the Collatz conjecture is, and the vast majority of people will never have heard of it. So for them, the title is meaningless, and only the very curious or those who really like Veritasium would click. In contrast, calling it the simplest math problem no one can solve conveys more information about the video to everyone. And this means more people can click on it, most of whom will never have heard of the Collatz conjecture, so I get to teach them something new. And since the video has a higher click-through rate, YouTube shows it to even more people. So if my aim is to increase the level of knowledge in the world by the maximum amount possible, this is the way to do it. The second reason we need to I optimize titles and though. thumbnails is to support the major goal of this channel. We are trying to make the best science films on every topic we tackle. That means traveling to meet experts and film experiments, hiring people to build props, make spectacular animations, research and fact check. We hire expert consultants to double and triple check our work. I don't want to make vlogs. I want to make science documentaries on YouTube that put broadcast to shame. And to make this possible and sustainable, the videos have to get views, and lots of them. And to do that, we have to make the best titles and thumbnails we can. YouTuber and Patreon CEO Jack Conti has talked about adjusting your packaging. The idea is know what you're passionate about, what you won't compromise on, and that stuff goes in the box. All the rest, like what paper it's wrapped in, that's the packaging. So the video is my focus, and the title and thumbnail are the packaging that I'm happy to adjust so I can make the type of videos that are important to me. Now, is it ironic okay. that a channel whose whole purpose is to promote a truth-seeking mindset has that to was, experiment that that at the edge of what is truthful in order to fulfill that purpose? It is something that I often worry about. You know, when I did, like, risk in my life to do X, it's like, well, what probability of death does there have to be for you to risk your life? Like... 50%? I love how he 100%. always overthinks things. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, is my life risked enough where I can put, I risk my life? You know, I only had a 9% chance of dying and I need at least a 13% chance. He is so funny. He was the same way two years ago when he asked me all this stuff. I was like, dude, just do whatever makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, like, I feel like my instincts are not good. But what I realized is that I don't have to trust my instincts. This problem, of okay. getting the best title and thumbnail. It's a scientific Chat, video. problem. A good video, though. I enjoyed it. We're just asking which accurate representation of the video will get the most clicks from a general audience. And that's a problem we can use the scientific method to solve. So I've hired a couple of really bright people and we spend a lot of time brainstorming and making titles and thumbnails and testing them out. For example, on Twitter and Patreon. Veritasium titles and thumbnails have gotten better, not because I'm better at it, but because of my team and our testing. Long. If you have ideas about how we could do it better, please get in touch. The results have often contradicted what I expected. I mean, this video seemed to Love perform 10% better when we excluded now. the word surprising from the title, so it became simply the secret of synchronization. I thought these two titles were basically a toss-up, but Patreon had a strong preference for one over the other. What's interesting about this research is that the more clickable titles and thumbnails often better represent the content of the video. Let me give you some examples. You know, one thing I didn't expect yeah. when YouTube brought in the real-time analytics tools and allowed title and thumbnail changes to affect impressions was that it would also work for older videos. So here is an old video that I... Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm...